So I'm just going to go through some other cubic graphs that are dissimilar to the um, one from before. So as I said, a cubic can either have three, two, or one roots or roots. So it can have three roots, uh, like we showed with the example before. And when it has three roots, it's going to have just the three normal, or the more technical word is distinct roots. The term distinct just means that it's a normal root that we're very familiar with where it just passes um, through the um, the x-axis like this. Distinct basically means that it's not a repeated root where it just touches the axis and then comes back onto the same side. It's not that. Um, a repeated root, uh, sorry, a distinct root means that it's not a repeated root. It's just the normal one that we're um, very familiar with. So let's do another example of someone with, when there's three roots. Let's do a negative graph this time. So let's do y is equal to x, 1 minus x, x plus 2, for example. So the roots are going to be 0, 1, because this here is going to give um, the 1 root, and minus 2. The y-intercept is going to be 0, because when there is just an x, we need to treat this when we're calculating the y-intercepts as x plus 0. So we times all numbers together, it's going to be times 0, um, so therefore um, the y-intercept is going to be 0. And it's going to be a negative graph, because if we times all the coefficients of x together, there is a negative here, so it's going to be negative 1. So it's going to be a negative graph, and if we know this, we can sketch it looking like something like this, uh, for example, something like that. Remember, labelling is the most important thing, so this is minus 2, this is 0, and this is 1. So it can have two roots. Now, when it has two roots, it's going to have one of the normal or um, distinct um, roots, and it's going to have one repeated root. Now, we won't have repeated roots in quadratics. A repeated root exists when one of the brackets is to the power of. So, for example, let's do y is equal to x plus 2, x plus 3 squared. Now, the squared means that the x uh, means that the minus 3 root is going to be a repeated root. So the roots are going to be minus 3 and minus 2. So let's do minus 3 about here and minus 2 about here, let's say. Um, the y-intercept is going to be, remember that there's a 2 here, so there's uh, 2 x plus 3 brackets, so we need to times by a 3 twice, so it's going to be 3 times 3 times 2, which is going to be 18, so we'll draw that somewhere up here, and it's going to be a positive graph because we times all the values of um, the coefficients of x together, we're going to get a positive number. So if we draw this, bearing in mind that the minus 3 is going to be a repeated root, it's going to look something like this here. Uh, remember, labelling is the most important thing, so this is going to be minus 3, this is going to be minus 2, and this is going to be 18 up here. I know I didn't hit exactly the y-intercept, the point that I was aiming for, but it doesn't matter too much. And this here is going to be the repeated root, and this is what the repeated root looks like when it's to the power of 2. Now, all repeated roots, it's not, not all repeated roots look like this, which we're going to go over in a sec. This is only when it's to the power of 2. So... It could also, uh, a cubic, could also have one root. And there are two instances where this could occur. The first instance is when there is just one repeated root. So, for example, this will be in the graph y is equal to x minus 1 cubed. Now, we're going to get a repeated. Now, the root is going to be uh, 1, and the y-intercept is going to be, remember, that uh, there's three brackets, so three x minus 1 brackets, so it's going to be minus 1 times minus 1 times minus 1, which is going to be minus 1, which we'll do down here. Now, the 1 root is going to be repeated, but it's a 3, so it's going to look different to the 2. It's going to be um, a different style of repeated root, and it's going to look something like this. I'm going to do it in a different colour because um, it can be quite difficult to, um, to see what it looks like. The repeated root is going to look like this. Remember, labelling is the most important thing. So this here is minus 1 and this here is 1. So this is the repeated root here when it is to the power of 3. Now, if I draw kind of like um, a graph down here to better illustrate what this looks like. 
So when it's just a normal, uh, a distinct root, so when it's just the power of 1, the bracket, it just passes straight through like this, and there's the root. And when it's to the power of 2, when it's a repeated root to the power of 2, as we just saw, it's going to look something like that, where it touches it and stays on the same side. Now, when it's to the power of 3, it sort of looks like a mix between the two, because it approaches the axis in the same way that um, a repeated uh, root does for the power of 2, in the fact that it curves before it um, goes into the x-axis. But it's like a distinct root in the fact that it still just goes straight through like that, and there is the um, root there. I would say that you just should remember this. This is what um, a uh, repeated root when it's to the power of 3 looks like, and that's what it looks like to the power of 2. Um, they're just two um, different um, um, looks in terms of how the roots look. And the second instance um, in which that this could occur is when it is just one normal distinct root. So this can exist when it's something like y is equal to x minus 1 x squared plus x plus 1. Now the reason this only has one root is because this bracket here has no roots. It has no solutions. It can't be uh, it can't be a factorised anymore. The discriminant is less than zero. So therefore, there is no root here, and the only root is here with the um, the x minus one. So the only root is going to be uh, one, which is going to be here. The y-intercept is going to uh, be um, minus one times one, which is just normal, um, which is going to give minus one. And it is going to be a positive um, cubic because it's going to be x times x squared this time because that's how you're going to get the x to the power of 3. So it's a positive um, graph. And because there is just the one root, it is going to look something like this. Here. It's going to look something like this. Remember, labelling is the most important thing, so this is going to be 1, and this here is going to be about minus 1. Now, it is important that you still have to have a turning point here, because this kind of bracket still creates a turning point. It's not like a repeated root, where in here there are no more uh, turning points. All of them are kind of condensed into the um, repeated um, root here. The end bracket is still going to create a turning point. Now where this turning point is isn't really too matter. You could if you wanted to draw the turning points further over here. You could draw the turning point on the other side of the axis as well if you wanted to. It doesn't really matter. We don't have um, enough information in order to know where it is. But there is definitely going to be um, a turning point. So now let's move on to quartics. So quartics are in the form y is equal to ax to the power of 4 plus bx cubed plus cx squared plus dx plus e. And like quadratics and cubics, in order to sketch them, you need to get them into the factorised form, which is going to be something like x plus f, x plus g, x plus h, x plus i, for example. And once again, in order to get into the factorised form you, without a calculator, you need to know the skills from chapter 7. And as chronologically, you wouldn't have done this yet. All of the equations in this in these videos this set of videos and in the uh, in this chapter is going to be in the factorized form for you so sketching quartics is the exact same as sketching cubics and uh, quadratics again in terms of the approach. The only uh, difference again is the shape of the graphs so let's uh, do an example so let's sketch and let's do y is equal to x plus 1, x minus 1, 2 minus x, and x plus 5. And let's sketch this and let's go through this. So you need to find the exact same things, uh, three things that you need to find for a cubic. The first thing is whether it's a positive or negative graph. And once again, this is solely based on what the coefficient of x to the power of 4 is. If the coefficient of x to the power of 4 is positive, it's going to be a positive graph, and it's going to look like this. And if uh, the coefficient of x to the power of 4 is negative, it's going to look like this, for example. Now, the difference between a cubic and a quadratic is a quadratic has one turning point, a cubic has two turning points, and a quartic 
has three turning points. The other difference, and this is actually a similarity between a quadratic and a quartic, is that the tails end up on the exact same side of the x-axis. And this is because when you um, put a negative number to the power of 4, it also ends up as a positive value, unlike the cubic. So the tails end up on the uh, same side uh, on the uh, x-axis. So in order to find whether it's a positive or negative graph, um, uh, the approach is the exact same. You times all the coefficients of x together. And if you do that, you will get negative 1, which is a negative number. So for this graph, it's going to be a negative graph. The second thing that you need to find is the roots. And once again, the approach is the exact same. You just make y equal to 0. And then you can easily find the values as the roots as x is equal to minus 1 x is equal to 1, x is equal to 2, and x is equal to minus 5. And to find the y-intercept, again, the approach is the exact same. You times all of the values that are not uh, the coefficient of x together. And if you do this, you're going to get the y-intercept is equal, is equal to minus 10. OK, so now we have all the info we need to um, draw the graph. So the roots are going to be minus 5, minus 1, 1 and 2, so we'll do minus 5 about here. We'll do minus 1 about here, 1 about here, and 2 about here. The wind step is going to be minus 10, so we'll just do that um, somewhere about here, let's say. And it's going to be a negative graph, so bear that in mind when you're drawing it. So it's going to look like the, um, the M shape. So when you draw this, it's going to look something like this and that's quite um, an accurate drawing of what it's going to look like. Remember that labelling is the most important thing so it's minus 5 here, minus 1, 1, 2 and minus 10 here. Now really quick I seriously doubt they will mark you down on this but it is something that is a feature with quartics and cubic so I thought I might say it. When the roots are further apart the turning point here will be further apart will be higher up the turning point here will be higher up than it is here because the roots here are further apart than the roots here which causes the um the turning point here to be a lot bigger. I would be extremely surprised if they, um, if they, if you lost marks if you drew these kind of like turning points the same size. Um, but I thought I would just mention it. Maybe just have it right at the back of your mind when you're drawing it. Um, uh, and yeah, okay. So this is how you draw the quartic. Um, uh, just a quick note as well, they will never ask you to go beyond a quartic. They won't ask you to draw, um, I don't even know what it's called, but um, when it's x to the power of 5, they'll never ask you that. This is the, um, the most complicated that it will get.